Hi folks, my name is Dan Maslick. I'm here from Master Engine Tuner Magazine. Today we're going to show you how to modify a stock OE calibration for use with a race car. Now what we've got here is we've got an E38 PCM that was supplied to us by the customer. The calibration that's on this particular PCM is for a 2007 Chevy Corvette with a 6 liter LS2. What we're going to do is modify this calibration so that it can work properly on his 6.2 liter LS3 that he had built for his race car. We're going to show you how to do that in a little bit. But what we're going to do right now is show you how to set the PCM up so that you're not suffering through any kind of issues like, you know, false diagnostic codes, limp home, stuff like that, or any of the other, uh, any of the other annoying, you know, distracting things that can happen while you're racing a car. So obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat. You can approach tuning however you feel fit, uh, you feel best for you. What I generally like to do, it's worked well for me over the years, is I like to start in this type of software with HP tuners. I like to start here on the right hand side and work my way left. Obviously this leaves me with the dyno tuning side last, which is great. So the first thing I like to do when we're setting up a PCM for road racing, or any kind of racing for that fact, you click on the speedo section here. And what you're going to notice in the general section, you've got the vehicle speed sensor output pulses per mile. These scalers, you can change these if you like yourself. There's an easier way, which is to go over here to the gear tire calculator. Now you see this particular setup is currently set up for a 26 inch tall tire. That's the stock value that GM puts in for the Corvette. The gear ratio is a 342. You'll see this value is set at one. Now if you're going to change your tire size, you can leave obviously this scaler as it is and simply enter in your new tire size, which would be, let's just say hypothetically, 27 inches. Now, if we go back here to this uh, VL, VS, uh, VSS output pulses per mile, you'll notice it's 31,599 is the value, 31,599. If we go back here, enter in a 27 inch tall tire and commit, we've basically now changed these values. Actually, HP Tuner software has automatically changed it for you. The other thing you'll have noticed when you click in the gear tire calculator, it can also auto scale your transmission tables, which is great for you drag racers that are going to keep your automatic we're running a manual. Um, this is all kind of moot unless you're running the stock, uh, a stock style speedometer, something that'll rely on the PCM for a signal. In this particular car's case, it's going to use GPS track acquisition, uh, track data acquisition. He's got a Jericho four speed. So all of this is kind of redundant anyway. What we do want to do though, is focus on the, sp the speed limiter. Now, when you click on limiter, you'll notice that here under source, it says calibration. Your other option is the GM LAN, the GM local area network on the car. This is how most calibrations will come up. In the case of the Corvette, it does run on the calibration as opposed to the LAM. Um, now you, you may want to make sure that you set this to calibration. This way, any changes that you make here will be valid. If you were to change all of these values here, but the PCM looks to the LAN for its instruction as far as speed limiting goes, any changes that you make here won't matter the PCM will look to something else. So we'll make sure it's on calibration. We're going to change this to 8,000 RPM. This engine's only built to run a maximum of 6,500. So if we hit eight, well, we're going to fit that engine in a bucket anyway. So uh, if you want to be redundant about it, you can end up entering the maximum values in here. If you go down your list and change all these maximum, um, these values to their maximum, this will basically make sure that this PCM never alters your fueling or ignition based on a speed limiter, you know, being cut, cutting in. So at any rate, once you've made these changes, you can turn around and save your file. And what we generally like to do every time we make a change like this, a major step, we name it a new file. I don't go with any fancy naming conventions by date, changes made, etc. You can do that if it makes you feel comfortable, whatever works for you. In my case, I just simply call this new file T1. So what we're going to do now is go over to the system settings and approach that.